What's up guys, welcome back to Lifted Live. This episode we're gonna be focusing, the main topic here is lift kit preparation. Many of you may be surprised, but adding a lift kit won't fix your truck. Not always. Not ever. Yeah. Not ever. You're probably so, gonna run into more issues if you, don't know, if you don't know what that means, we'll get more into that in depth uh, shortly here. Shortly. All right, guys, so we're going to be talking about lift kit preparation, like I said. I said. I said it first. Whatever. All right, so what's the first step then? You're thinking about lifting your truck. Okay, a lot of people don't think about when they're like, okay, yeah, I'm going to get a lift kit for my truck. And primarily this applies to older vehicles where people bring in their trucks for a lift kit and say it's 10 years old now or whatever and it's got over 100,000 miles. Well, depending on where you live. And typically, you know, we see these trucks come in they want a lift kit and then they don't expect and or realize that most of the factory components are worn out by now and we can't put a lift kit on there that's gonna function properly unless we replace some of those factory worn out components that we're gonna reuse like ball joints and wheel bearings and tie rods and idler arms and pitman arms. So basically don't be surprised if you go to lift your older truck and it's going to need a bunch more work than what was originally quoted because we have to replace worn out components. We or you. Or you. Yeah, I mean, preferably it'd be nice if people wanted to uh, go and fix everything beforehand, but sometimes they don't know exactly what they need or what's wrong. So. Yeah, and for those people that are gonna do the install themselves, you might not find out until you get to alignment mm -hmm. that all these things are bad. So if something looks a little sketchy when you're taking it apart yourself, just replace it. Yeah, I think the most common things we see is like, is worn out ball joints and steering components like tie rods. I'm getting a napkin. <laughs> I'm making a mess. Well, Usually, you, uh, the first, the way people usually it realize it is, is it'll start to wear your tires funny. Um, usually you'll get like a weird uh, wave V pattern on your tires, how they wear. And, and that's usually how people find out because they'll be like, what's, what's going on with my tires here? They're wearing funny. And then when that happens, then they, they know something's wrong. So they bring it in and then uh, their mechanic checks it and yep, oh, your ball joints are bad but you can check your ball joints yourself by basically what you want to do is you're going to want to jack up the vehicle from the suspension because you want to keep the suspension loaded so that if the suspension's at full drop, say you just have it on jack stands and the suspension's just at full droop, it can bind them, it can bind the ball joints up so that you're not going to see the actual play in the ball joints. So you're going to want to jack up from say the control arm and load the suspension. And then what you want to do is take a pry bar or you don't, I guess you don't need a pry bar or a long screwdriver, something to give you leverage to rock the tire at the six o'clock position basically and try and move it up and down. And then you're gonna also wanna feel it side to side to feel if there's any plane in your tie rods. Um, but yeah. yeah. And I mean, honestly, you're not gonna get away with it just because you have a new truck. I was at Cody's yesterday at his shop. Mm -hmm. He's putting ball joints, lower ball joints in his 2014. Just, they went bad already, and he has stock tires on it with a leveling kit. Hmm. So, hmm. just because your vehicle is two years old doesn't mean you're going to get away with it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, don't always expect that your vehicle's in perfect condition and that everything is good to go when you get a lift kit. Because sometimes you can, there's more to it than that, and you will need to replace factory components in order for the lift kit to go properly. Right. And even that, <clears throat> apart from wear items, um, dodges in the lower strut bolts. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. So a lot of vehicles also 
what we see is, especially in this state, this, this great state, I may add, um, the Rust Belt state, we see one of the big problems is Ram trucks, 1500 trucks. Uh, what, year, what year did that buy sell start? Uh, 09 to... 09 to up and up. And up, yeah. 09 and up, Ram 1500s. The lower strut bolt has, it's very common for the bolt to seize inside of the, the, uh, the bushing in the lower strut. And we, we've seen that a couple of times. And so where a normal leveling kit on that truck would take, we quote it two hours, ends up taking six hours because you end up having to cut and grind and cut and grind and cut and grind and smash and hammer to get the lower uh, strut bolt out. So, you know, there's issues like that too that always arise and that you can't always plan for. I mean, expect a lot of stuff to not come apart if your truck's say older than three years old, four years old. Yeah. Um, well, for example, last week we had that, that black F-150. Mm -hmm. um, we, it was a 97. Yeah, 97 F-150. Actually, it was, it was up on the hoist here. Yeah, we it, was a lot, it was in here last yeah. week. Um, she had $1,200 worth of just repair parts. Mm -hmm. Upper control arms because of the bushings, uh, lower ball joints, tie rotted inner, outer sleeves, CV, everything. CV was, axles CV were axles bad. were bad. Yeah. Oh. So, I mean, it can, it can range anywhere from $50 for a ball joint or $1,500 to replace basically the whole front end. Yeah, and that, that's without labor. Mm -hmm. And that's just parts, that's parts cost. Yeah. So, Don't just think that you're gonna go throw a lift kit in on the weekend on your truck. Cause, and then a lot of people don't understand, they'll be like, well, I don't, I don't get it. Like, well, how is that bad? Or, or how is this part bad? And maybe the part might not be bad, but in order to take that part off, to do our jobs to install that lift kit, it's not gonna come off and be in good, good enough shape to go back on. So when you disrupt a part that's been setting its whole life where it is, you know, and then you go in there and try and uh, disrupt it and then put it back together, it's not gonna work and you gotta replace it. You know, so it may not be a problem then, but once we try and take it apart or move it or whatever we gotta do, it can be a problem putting it back together. Okay, yeah. Let's take some questions. Ready? All right. Frick so, I mean, fricking. Uh, yeah, what do you guys think you guys about tight? one inch leveling kit? We're uh, boys. What kind of lift and what kind of truck? A seven and a half inch rough country? Yeah. With a one inch leveling kit on top? Banker can tell you about that. Your CV angles are gonna hate you. So you're, you're gonna be doing ball joints, you're gonna be doing CV angles, CV axles. What do you have on your pizza, dude? Are those yellow peppers? They're banana peppers and they're delicious. And it depends on the lift kit. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming he's got a Silverado with a seven and a half inch rough country. Yeah, um, that's what I would guess and too. And I probably wouldn't do that. Like, cause a, I've, I've had that thought yeah. because Kirk, Kirk went and stacked a leveling kit on top of his and made his truck taller than mine. And Kirk thinks he's really cool. Yeah, now he thinks he's cool. So I got to try and keep up with him. And uh, that's my next step is stack a leveling kit. And I'm scared to do it. So I'm not going to do yeah, it. Yeah, like I said in my, my, uh, my video that I did, what was it called? St Stacking with Brad. <laughs> yep, in that masterpiece that I did, <laughs> I talk about one of the main things that you want to be concerned about when you're thinking about adding a leveling kit or something on top of a lift kit is knowing where your angles are at now. And if they're already, you know, pretty close to maxed out, I wouldn't even go bother adding more on top of it because then it's just going to go to shit. Real fast. It's going to be a shit storm. It's not going to be cheap. Fox makes lift struts. We've got Fox struts with a spacer on top. And, and uh, replace the rears with Fox with probably reservoirs. You're gonna get a little bit better ride, but I think the anti wrap blocks do a lot to worsen the ride. Yeah, I've noticed they definitely that. do because they squish the springs basically and yeah, make it a lot harsher in the back. Mm -hmm. So the front, there's hope. In the rear, without a full leaf spring, yeah, well, I mean, guess for the rear, you could go with a replacement leaf spring, eliminate the block. You probably still have to put a spacer. Anthony Morris asks, is there any upkeep on an actual lift kit? So once it's installed, you just let her go and run? <coughs> Absolutely not, Anthony. Where, where is he on? Facebook. Which one of these is Facebook? The one right in front of you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have eight cameras in case you guys didn't know. Uh, they, they, I'm sure they don't know because they, they don't know because they're all pointed at us. They're not here. Upkeep. Every oil change, you're gonna want to go through and check the hardware, or if you don't do it yourself, take it to a mechanic that 
deals with lifted vehicles. Um, and just check all the hardware, you know, check the ball joints, check the tie rods. Um, yeah, I mean, anytime you lift a vehicle, anytime you alter the suspension from factory, you're gonna increase the potential for wear on every item. So it's always smart to check all those wear items. And a wear item is gonna be any, pretty much any sus suspension component whether it's the rubber bushings in your control arms or your ball joints or your CV axles or your wheel bearings, they're all wear items. And whenever you alter the suspension, you're gonna increase basically the wear that's gonna be put on those items. So it's always good to check all of those frequently. Yeah. I mean, we always recommend after you get your leveling kit installed, you come back in 500 miles and we do a retorque right away. But once after that initial 500 miles, if everything's looking good, then like Banker said, you know, every oil change, check everything. But, you know, it's always, it, it's not gonna hurt to check everything too much, you know. Right. And if you're it's extremely anal, like some of the people sitting behind the camera. Kirk. Kirk, you can keep a can of spray paint so you can touch up your lift <coughs> kit every oh, now and yeah. then. Oh, okay. You know, if you live somewhere here <laughs> where it's rusty. So when I look at Rough Country Lifts for my 04 Ram 2500 Hemi, they make a three inch for the diesel and it says it will not fit a gas head. Why would it not fit and what could I do to make it work? Spring right. Yeah, usually it's because of the, the springs that, I'm assuming that kit comes with replacement coil springs and the springs that they have selected, Rough Country has selected for that kit are to be compatible with the weight of the diesel engine. Other times it's the exhaust system because on the commons you have just a single pipe coming off one side of the engine Whereas on the gasser, you got two pipes that merge into a Y, and I think it can contact the drive shaft. Drive or, shaft, the front. Uh, yeah, it's the drive shaft. Front usually. drive shaft contact in mm -hmm. the Y pipe. So, yeah, that's why. Danny Rickrick wants to know what lift would get you laid more in a Silverado, a Rough Country or <laughs> a Zone? Ooh. Zone. Zone, because then you could tell people it's made by BDS and you're almost a baller. You could be like, but I'm balling on a budget. He's just trying to get laid. They don't care what brand it is. Mm, yeah, the most the, girls your are average, actually, yeah, your average question. truck slut, you're gonna save money and get what taller is that? lift. <laughs> what is that? Brad drives a, a stock height truck, guys. Uh, it's not stock height. We talked about this. I have 34 inch tires on there, guys. She ain't no stocker. <laughs> Anyway, save the money, get the rough country, which is going to be taller. It's a diesel, too. Yeah. <laughs> Thinks he's cool because he's got diesel. And it's for sale, though. Richard, oh, I don't know how to say his last name. Uh, does having a large... It better not be uh, Richard Rawlings. It's not. Good. Say negative 44 or greater on my rims. Will it cause any premature wear? So, will a <coughs> negative <coughs> offset impact the... The what? Components, the suspension, basically. Yes. yes. Will it cause premature wear? Absolutely. Like I said before, any alteration over factory is going to alter the wear characteristics of every component. Yes. Simple. Your truck was designed for your stock 17 by eights in 31 inch tires. That's what I like. <laughs> How much good is it? Is it if I buy a brand new truck, is it going to wear out in 20,000 miles because I put negative 44 gold blades on my truck? Right. It's not going to wear out instantly but where your factory ball joints would have made it to 175, now they're probably gonna make it to 100, maybe 75. Well, if it's a GM truck, they're gonna make it to like 50. Wow. And then once you get replacements, then they'll make it every 20. <laughs> and that's all downhill from there, you know. <laughs> How long would it take you to install a 7 inch BDS on a 2017 Tundra with 22 by 12s and 37? How long would it take us? In minutes? Isn't that hours? 12 lines and 37. Oh. On a 7 inch tundra. Uh, do you want it done well or you just <laughs> want it done quickly? Won't the 37s won't fit, will they? I think what he's getting at is what would the shower oh. rate be? Uh, 37s and 12, 12 wise, you're going to have a lot of issues trying to get those to fit anyway with, you know, the frame and the cab mount being there. Yeah. Like the, a lot of issues. The problem with Toyota is bumper. The Did he say tundra? Yeah, Tundra. But yeah, the, pro the big problem with Tundras and fitting big tires is Toyota has their 
forward most cab mount very close to the opening of the front wheel well and so the tire will hit that that's one of the first things that will hit once you go bigger tire uh, so you'd have to chop that off and if you're trying to figure out shop rate what year tundra was it Oh, so it's a brand new Tundra. Mm -hmm. Probably 14 to 16 billable hours. Probably have more into it than that, but that's how we roll. So Jeremy has a 2015 Ram 1500 looking to level. Is it a better idea to lower the rear or raise the front cushion, which would have less wear on his truck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, Jeremy. I'm laughing at the guy behind the camera. <laughs> I mean, uh, technically. What, what year was it? 15. 15? So, still a coil spring truck, right? I mean, I would just level the, I would just lift the front. I mean, you're not going to increase the wear on a component noticeably with just a leveling kit. It's not something that you're going to, it's not like you're going to be wearing out components every 10,000 miles with a leveling kit. It's more so that uh, the rate, at which the components will wear will be greater than stock, but is it noticeable? Not necessarily. So there's several people that now feel bad for having bought a rough country lift kit because of YouTube. <laughs> do you do you really believe it doesn't have a place in the market? It absolutely does. It's a very good entry level lift kit. It's a very good I want my truck taller, but I don't have a whole lot of money, but I want to be in the game lift mm -hmm. kit. But that's you need to go do. into it understanding that you are not going to have the best ride quality. Um, I guess expect to know what you're, you're paying for, you know? Yeah. You get what you pay for? You're right. A lifter Period, truck's yeah. not going to be great. The one thing I do love about it, I, my truck and Kirk's truck have been lifted the same amount of time. I won't mention the brand his is, but his lift kit is well, rusty no. as shit. And my finish on my Rough Country is like brand new. Is it? It, it's like I put it in yesterday. I don't know. What do you mean, where's the shop located? We are located in Appleton, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Your, your guess is as good as mine. Okay. I'm just going to stare at you awkwardly Champ, all the time. Did Champ do the leather? Who did the work? He did the, he did the sports. All right, we're just going to send it. We're just going to send it. End it. Until we're, next week. We're just going to end it and send it. You guys got a special guest next week? Yeah, we got a special guest next week. Bono. Bono. From from you too. Oh yeah, I, I hate their music. I love I love their their hairdos though. Their hair. <laughs> All right, see ya. Goodbye. Bye, Brad. See you later. Brad left. I don't know what time I it is. I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs>